All right, so we're gonna tie up uh, kind of a easy go-to pattern called the bad hair day. So yeah, we're starting out with a one on, just straight eye, thread of your choice. I like stuff that doesn't break real easy, so I've been using a lot of that Vetus gel spun, either in a 50 or a 100. This is a 100 just because I've been tying a lot <laughs> recently, and uh, I had run out of the 50 at the moment. So just a thread base. I like my flies to last, even if they're a simple one, so just a little touch of super glue will cement that in. I'm going to do a basic fire tiger. Uh, color pattern for it, so just some some yellow going into a nice chartreuse into kind of a salmony fire orange. Finally, just your standard green, and then I'll probably wrap either some uh, peacock eye stub or this laser dub. It's also got some kind of rusty, was this uh, nasty rusty by Solar Synthetics Angel Hair. And then I may throw a little eye on there as well. Start with your yellow. And with this craft for kind of a lot goes a long way with a lot of materials. Get our tail section. Maybe just, you know, come straight across the, the ends to level everything out. Toss it on there. This one we're not going to spin around the, the shank. We just kind of want, want it right on top there. Just another small clump. So I'm gonna, all those guard hairs, I'm actually pulling those out for the tail. Place that guy on there. So we got our, got our tail on there. And then we're gonna do our first reverse wrapper, kind of that pop a big hollow tie with bucktail, but we're using craft fur. So get our chartreuse. Again, less is more. I wouldn't be tying anything over, you know, a number two pencil in diameter, even less. I'd start with less is more. Um, so Dave says you, you want to leave all these guard hairs in because when you tie it in backwards, we're going to tie it in like this. Right, and then these are gonna fold back over it. But what I found is that, and he probably does this on his videos, he's just not talking you through it because his look really good. But if I, if, I, if I pick some of that out on the first, um, the first clumps that I tie in, I end up getting a better taper because it's not just this big, huge mountain right off the back. So I'll pull out a few, and that's just kind of a, an eyeball thing after a while. The other thing he does is he kind of puts it all the way on the hook and then it's nice and, and on there already and he doesn't spin it around. I, I've tried that. It works really well. I actually get a, a better looking fly that way, but it's kind of a pain in the ass to push it all the way over. So lately I've just been doing kind of two loose wraps like that. Use my fingernail right there and, and kind of pushing down and spinning around just like I would do on any other fly. This is kind of a cool tactic. He calls it funking the hook. You just basically are, are flicking that eye of the hook and it kind of spreads the materials naturally around. Cool little pro trick that saw off YouTube. Guys that were tying a lot of reverse bucktail, you just get a hollow pen and just push everything back. Kind of gives you a head start to where you're going. Just kind of work that thread through. And what you don't want to do is tie on top of the craft fur because you don't want it to lay down. You want it to have a little bit of a shoulder. Something that Dave doesn't do that, that I like to do, picked up from those guys, you know, tying musky flies, is just doing a little dam. Just a little thread dam, thread dam just to, it's got a little bit of a shoulder, but it's not crazy, right? So you can see less is more. You, you want some of those colors that you're tying on top of to still show through a little bit. Helps with the blend. So we're gonna go with our kind of fiery orange. So here's another thing about, about this, is if I tie this long stuff in over and over and over, all that happens is it just completely covers everything and you don't see anything. That looks kind of cool, that wing there. Anyways, not to be distracted. Um, I'm gonna pull some more of those guard hairs out. I'm gonna level it out. Uh, so the thing I was saying was you, you wanna do these kind of short, like this might even be too long, because even after I tie it in backwards and it flips around, 
you don't want it all the way to the end. You, you want to taper it forward. So against your best instincts, at least for mine, I, I don't want to keep cutting that shorter and shorter, but it's going to look better overall. So put it on top. Two loose wraps just to grab everything. Spin the material around using your, your thumbnail, pushing down right where the materials meet the thread, spin everything around. So that looks pretty sparse, but I'm going to do two of them, right? So funk it, move that stuff around, pull it back, get your thread forward. Little, and as you make these dams, they're going to get smaller until we don't even use one for the front. So that's nice, right? That stuff still shows through. That's why I'm going to use two clumps of this, this orange here. So I'm going to pull out just a little bit of those under hairs, less than I did the last time. Still kind of long. This one's got a little bit more bulk, just a, a touch longer. Again, twice real loose around. Spin our materials around the hook shank there. So it's all equal. Tight wraps. Bunking it. Use our hollow pen. Push it back. Gives us a good start. Pull our thread forward. Even less of a little dam there. Uh, at this point, I'm going to add a little bit of flash. Maybe 10 strands or so. Now you want these to be a little bit longer than the very ends of these tails. Just a little bit longer back there. Kind of right on top. Three turns right over the top again. And here you can kind of do the same thing that we were doing with the craft for just spinning it around that hook shank. You don't want a just big clump of it on there. Don't need to necessarily get it on the bottom. If any real long ones are still in there, you can go in there and trim those off. So that's looking pretty good. So we're going to add some green there. So when you get to the front of the fly here, you can Get a little bit more material if you want, just to give you kind of a, a bigger bulk, bigger prop. Um, I still pull a little bit of material out, material out, material out. Let's check the length. A little long still for me, so I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna cut, straighten the ends and cut. Maybe I'm only cutting like a half inch at the most off at a time. I just want to see how it's going to stack up. That should be pretty good. So, two loose wraps around again. One, two. Should be good. Use your thumbnail to spread it around, just pushing down on it and spinning. Bunking it. Looks pretty good. Probably one more of those guys with the green there. Gonna not pull any of those guard hairs out on this one. This one I will just go straight over the hook eye there. Two loose wraps. And then we're going to just finish with, I think I'm going to use the uh, Sen Senya's Laser Dub in black. So what we want to do is just separate it out, just pull it long, stack it back on it itself. Pull it long, stack it back on itself, do that a few times. 
think we're going to kind of go for a bulky head, even though I don't have that much room here in the front. So I'll just do two wraps right there, flip it, and then same thing with this, pulling it out, stacking it back on itself, and I'll pop this guy in the bottom here. Two wraps there, fold him back. Two, fold him back, One and two, which is, what's nice about this, um, this GSP thread is that you can get it under that material and actually pull back. That's what's nice about having the strength of that thread is you can do a lot of stuff with it that with, if I was using like Viva 6 odd or 8 odd, it would just, it would break for sure. Just can't manhandle it like that. So once I start getting into the bigger sized hooks, size one, one odd, two odd, stuff like that, um, it's kind of nice to be able to kind of wrench on it a little bit. Yeah, what I'm gonna do is put some eyes on this guy. So I just got some chartreuse and red ones. Everybody should have this stuff. It's, you know, brush on, zap a gap, which is great for a lot of applications, but um, putting eyes on is good too. So I'm just gonna touch it right where I think the eye is gonna be just like two times just to get a little base going. I will grab my eye. I'm just gonna drop it on there. I'm not gonna push it real hard because um, a lot of times the Zapagap will stick to your finger and then the eye will and craft furs everywhere. And it's, a, it's a cluster. So we're gonna do the same thing on this side. Just a couple touches. Where we want to place that eye and just drop it on there. Then here comes, you know, UV Pro Sport Fisher. Use this stuff on just about everything. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically turn this guy and I'm going to just coat around that eye. I'm not going to necessarily go over it. If you do, that's fine. But really, what I want to do is just make sure that line around the eye is uh, anchored to something. So it's going to have some some UV resin, but that's, that's pretty good for that side. Flip it on this guy, this, and yeah, that's, that's basically it. One last thing you can do, you can get yourself a little Sharpie. I saw Dave do this trick, which is kind of neat. He just, it's kind of obvious, but I never did it. I, I used to take the fly off and then have it like on a surface and mark it, which works fine. Um, but he just kind of holds it here and then you can kind of get both sides at the same time and the top. Just go down, go down, they reach the tail and it's just flashing it. So that's it. That is the um, Bad hair day. Pretty simple fly. Great for fishing smallies or anything that eats bait fish. You're not gonna, you know, you're not gonna cry if you stick it in a tree like a changer or something that you spent you know, an hour, two hours on. Just rip it out of there and break it off and have another one on.